A model steam engine test plant, part 14. Cleaning the condenser tank and brass base, ready for soft soldering the parts together. Once the soldering is completed and the parts are cool, I refit the tank in the lathe chuck and support the outer end so I can clean it up using emery cloth. In the same way as I made the water tank, it is vital that all the parts you're soldering are extremely clean. In this clip, using my Proxon motor tool fitted with a small flapper wheel, which by the way is 80 grit, quite coarse, I'm cleaning up an area just inside the tank at both ends. This is the area where I will be applying some Friar Lux solder paint. The idea being that if I apply it on the inside edge, when it gets hot and melts, it will run down and form a really good joint almost like a fillet. After cleaning up one end of the tube, I turn it round to do the other side. First of all, I'm removing the burr from the edge. And then in exactly the same way, I go all the way around and make sure that this edge of the tank is also very clean. Over the years, I've made a lot of condenser tanks. I used to sell them commercially in a very small way. You don't need to use silver solder to put the tanks together. It's not a pressure vessel and soft solder will work perfectly well. You don't need to deburr the outer edge, it's a far better idea to fit it in a chuck. Because of the large diameter of this copper tube, it needs to be a big chuck. This is a four-jaw self-centering chuck fitted in my Smart and Brown lathe, very useful. If you don't have such a large chuck, you can improvise. If you don't have a chuck large enough, you could make wooden plugs for each end. Possibly a simpler idea is to just use an orbital sander the main thing is the outer shell of the copper tube needs to be clean and oxide free. Using fairly coarse emery cloth scratches the surface. By doing this it gives a really good key for the paint. Now it's time to go into the outer part of the workshop. Here it is on the brazing hearth along with the base, which has also been thoroughly cleaned and rubbed down. I'm going to use this stuff, it's called Friar Lux Paint. It's a good idea to read the instructions. You can have a preview by reading these instructions. It contains lead and zinc chloride. I'm going to be soldering this right next to a wide open door, which is good for two things. It will stop me inhaling any fumes, and the daylight gives a clear video image. I'm applying the Friar Lux paint using an old paintbrush, a generous amount around the inside edge. Then I carefully brush some onto the outside edge. I know it looks a bit of a mess, but trust me, it works, and you will get a very strong condenser tank. I've made a lot of these, and every one of them has been successful, but it's a very good idea to use a generous amount of solder, which makes for a very strong and homogeneous joint. I carefully position the tank on the brass base, and I'm checking this using a steel rule to make sure that it's in the middle. In this part of the clip, I'm making a very fine adjustment, but now it's okay. Time for the blowtorch. This part does not need to be glowing red. That's silver soldering. This is soft soldering. It needs to be hot enough to melt the solder so that it flows. There's a fine line between doing the job properly and making a mess of it. If you radically overheat the part, then oxides will form and the solder joint will not be good. I'm adding some electrical multicore solder into the mix. This tells me when the correct temperature's been reached and also add some more lead solder to the mix. This is not lead-free solder. I'm cleaning up around the base using a paintbrush soaked in water, and this gives a good finish, as you can see here. The problem is the part is extremely hot and I don't want to quench it. While the part is cooling, I need to do something else. First of all, I'm changing the orientation of the gas inlet to the jets. I'm just turning the assembly around so that the gas can be connected from the rear. This is a steam boiler test plant, so by rear, I mean the other side. When I start to use this plant, I will operate it from this side. That's why I turned the pressure gauge around to face where I'm going to be sat. I will be able to see the pressure gauge, the water gauge, and operate the injector controls all from this side. The second tap on the boiler is the steam valve for the injector. With the boiler in this position, all the controls are very readily accessible. The tank in the outer part of the workshop is still very hot, far too hot to handle, so I think what I'm going to do is pump some water into the boiler. It took quite a while with this hand pump before any water appeared in the water gauge, and at this stage I noticed that the water gauge glass was a bit dirty, so I'm going to clean it. 
I use the box key to remove the top nut, and all I need to do now is use one of these. As it says on the pack, they are superior pipe cleaners. All I have to do is remove them from the pack and use it to clean the water gauge as shown here. It soon picks up some water and makes a really good job of cleaning the inside of the glass. Eventually the soldered tank had cooled sufficiently for me to handle it, and here I'm mounting it once again in the chuck of the smart and brown lathe. Using a centre drill, I drilled a hole in a piece of mahogany block. And yes, I do know that the part is off centre, but it will be fine for this application. In the tailstock, as you can see, I've fitted a live centre, which applies pressure to the mahogany block and holds the piece of pipe firmly in the chuck. I have a few gas canisters that are nearly empty, and I thought it would be a good idea in this episode to completely empty some of these gas tanks. This clip is obviously running much faster than usual. It's running at 400% as I pump some more water into the boiler. And it also shows the water level climbing up the glass very quickly. More about this in the next episode. That's it for now. Stay safe, stay healthy. Thanks for watching, and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my Mainsteam Models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.